Congratulations. 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 Like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to right there. Smash like. That right there is now our advertisement. I'm just cut out the like, comment, subscribe. It's just going to be that. Damn on that bell. Dab on that bell. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Heat Wave. It's the kitchen sink of a podcast that's sometimes about video games. Uh, it's hey. always about video games. Don't even act like that. Like three-fourths of the time it's not, but okay. <laughs> uh, we uh, goofed last week, and we didn't have an episode go out. Sorry. That's it. That's really all the explanation we're going to give them. In Audacity, I clicked on a section before I hit export and only <laughs> exported five seconds and then uh, practiced bad data hygiene and didn't save the project. Yep. Yeah, it's a goof. Whatever. It happens. So we have a lost episode. We'll, we'll come back to those topics. When it we come won't back to be them. the last time. No, we'll have another lost episode. And it episode. won't be the first time either. Shh. <laughs> 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 we covered those up with other episodes. <laughs> At least this we, time it wasn't because we were using SingStar microphones and everything was unlistenable. Yeah. Oh, God. And I still Ooh. put the unlistenable episodes Can out. Can we do a throwback day? I, like Brittany, I was just like that idea just popped into your into my head. But only one SingStar mic, so we have to trade it oh, around. So you mean like yeah. the time that was our best podcast? Is when we that's, only had one microphone. That's, that's also the the reason COVID. why it was so good is because we had a time limit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Otherwise, our podcast was three hours long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty terrible. I don't know. That was before I like we convinced Michelle that editing wasn't heretical. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I got convinced of that summer. Uh, editing was nice. Streaming was a thing. Uh, I, I did lots of little things that everyone had to convince me for. Yeah. <laughs> the podcast itself, asking questions. I learned a lot. Hey, asking Jerry, what questions. else are we talking about this week? We're talking about asking questions. What questions do you ask? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's bullshit. Well, I'll start the timer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So, what questions do you what, ask? What, what questions do you ask? Uh, so I like to talk. This is a, a thing I learned um, just from life and I think from Jairus too. I feel like he has either told me this or encouraged this. Mm -hmm. So people love to talk about the things they like. Yeah. Even mm. if you don't know anything about it. And I learned... Um, it's better instead of being like acting like you know about a subject, it's much better to just let the person go and be like, tell me more about that. And they will just love it. And they more than likely they'll like you, too, because you are interested in a thing that they're interested in. And you've so, allowed them to dominate the conversation. Yeah. And they think you're a great listener and they think you're very nice and they will probably tell you all kinds of bullshit that you probably don't want to hear. But you've made a connection with a person. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> well, and and. Um, yeah, that is one of my favorite tricks or like not tricks. That's <clears throat> no, it's a um, trick. I can't do it. I, <laughs> so at, at the core of who I am as a human, I believe that everyone is interesting in some way. It's just on me to figure out for myself why they're interesting. So like whenever I meet a new person, even if they're weird or awkward, I'm like, okay, what, what's what's your thing? What's your deal? What's the thing that you – because like the best thing in the world is when someone talks passionately about something that they care about. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So, so getting to the point of finding that is like one of the great joys. Um, so, uh, Jairus, you're one of the you're one of the best people I've ever seen at doing that, at finding the thing that like is interesting about someone. Um, and I've always admired that skill, especially like when we're out in public. And I judge the fuck out of someone, and then you make them seem cool. Yeah. Well, well, the, the <laughs> inverse of that is sometimes you deploy it on someone who you think is cool and then mm. five minutes into the conversation they hit like a weird racist landmine and you're like ah mm -hmm. fuck. Yeah, ah, fuck daisy i let Don't you talk like for five minutes and that's where you went huh 
<laughs> shit. Wow, that didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we skipped right to it, huh? I wonder how many like <laughs> guarded conversations it would have taken to get to that point. So I- I've been in that boat. My problem is that when I hear someone talk, and if I don't care, it's the most obvious thing in the world. I, I have, yeah. I have, I have stopped listening, and I am. Yeah, thinking you usually about turn else. away from them and start talking to someone else when that happens. Yeah, I have done it, and um, yeah, I, I, it's just. It is. And that's why you're like, you it's not a that. trick. And I was just like, no, it's not a trick. I my I try it and it doesn't work. I just like someone will tell, start talking to me about working on a car engine and I will legitimately just be like sigh and then walk away. <laughs> that's easy. I wish I could even do that. Like if I uh, I have to kind of go <laughs> into not my head mode. There silently like Buster Bluth, just like trying to neither be seen nor heard. Hoping <laughs> yes. that the conversation is a T Rex that won't notice him if he doesn't move. I can relate to that. Hutch just vaporizes out of existence. <laughs> Hutch, I will say that you're really good at just like chuckling and walking away. Oh, good. I, I thought I was always terrible with that. No, <laughs> oh my like, god, you do have a wonderful like goodbye chuckle. It's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah, it like that rises really this chuckle. certain amount and then bounces out. So it's like, ha 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 ha. It's so friendly. <laughs> 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 hey, you just did it. <laughs> uh, it's not thing I even like notice about, but like, yeah, you've mentioned it before, uh, Michelle. Yeah, and yeah, like, maybe Have you too, Jerry. I don't worry. Okay. So someone has told me that before. I thought I never really noticed that, but I could see that. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it's like we all have deflection strategies whenever we're in weird conversations that we don't want to be in. Um, and I can tell that Hutch, through the life that he has lived and the brother that he has, has honed that skill. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 more than more than him <laughs> yeah but after living with hutch for three years i found some uh other people that he would like to chuckle away from <laughs> chuckle away <laughs> i'm like picturing like hutch does chuckle i'm picturing a meme that says chuckle away and it's got zoidberg like crab dancing and, and scampering to oh, the yeah. right of the screen that's what you should be thinking about <laughs> <laughs> I when I'm in a conversation that I don't want to be in, I hit them with the generic like, "Oh wow, that's crazy," or whatever. <laughs> I'd be like, "Wow, what?" And then I don't really know what to say. <laughs> Man, I wish I could go that far. I'm just like, "That's cool." Yeah. I think "huh" is one of my favorite cr- crutch words when it comes to uh, a topic that either I don't care about or know absolutely nothing and can't relate to. Huh. Uh huh. Huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm okay okay i'm trying to use huh less because i i feel like it's a verbal crutch much like like mm-hmm. um, oh yeah absolutely yeah that's yeah. totally fair i, I might have over rotated and now i just say hmm interesting when things are not <laughs> Which is the same thing. Which is, I, I do that too. It's just yeah. a different set of sounds. You just added more syllables. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Bart- for, well, to kind of get back on to like, the topic, though, uh, uh, when we actually started our very first podcast, I learned a very valuable lesson from our friend Sean Watson. Who just like straight up asked uh, Pandemic Interactive? That's a bad na- name now. Uh, yeah. But uh, when he was, if you think uh, about it, all pandemics are interactive. I know. Um, and they, he was just like, "Hey, can I have a free copy of your game and I'll talk about it on my blog?" And I was just like, "You can do that." <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, so you just would write emails to companies and ask them for free games or or whatever because yeah. we were a blog or a news yeah. outlet and we would write about it and we would get like invited to pl- a couple places we um, got three cases of nos from that mo- we got maneuver. way more than three cases holy I shit i got a fridge NOS full of that <laughs> <laughs> we got invited to spark plug games to hang out that with them cool. for the day we interviewed yeah. them and 
learned how they made games, and we played their game, and we had pizza and played board games. Yeah, it was a really that fun is time. rad. On top of that, we um, we actually made some like actual industry friends that day. Yeah, like I've still talked to both Megan and John like on yeah. a monthly basis. So yeah, me me as well a, a little less frequently. Like I mm-hmm. um briefly forgot that Megan. Like, Megan and I stayed in touch, and, like, when I was mm-hmm. doing freelance stuff, her and I would pass things back and forth and say, like, hey, you might be right for this or this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hadn't seen her in so long, but she does uh, a bunch of email marketing for a local lawyer who is a mm-hmm. friend of mine and, and my lady friend's. Uh, and I, think I she just actually works for that lawyer's office now. She does, yeah. Right. She okay. um, <clears throat> she does their uh, a bunch of their marketing stuff, and I okay. like didn't realize that, and then realized that, and then ran into her, and I was like, oh shit, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, but so it was like I... it was in that weird space where I wasn't sure if too much time had passed, and I should mm. not expect her to remember who I am. Yeah, yeah. Jarris, you're kind of hard to forget. <laughs> I try to avoid assuming that so you don't just like, do you not know who I am? Because that's the worst thing. That's, that's the worst fair. question that's a human fair. can ask. Yeah, don't ask that question. Speaking of questions. Don't ask that question. I was just going to say really quickly, um, the last time I saw Megan was about four years ago when we first moved to Raleigh. And I interviewed with her and another lady who ran like this soap company or something mm. like that. And I was interviewing for the office manager position, but they didn't hire me because they said I didn't have enough experience. <laughs> so, I mean, you had never worked in an true. office. That's true. I've never worked in an office before. <laughs> but I told my boss about that now and he was like, ha, huh. he like scoffed or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that's so. that's why I say that you're in the best spot for you cuz like yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> and I mean that was like that's that's a hard thing for a lot of people is like finding a person to ch- take a chance on them. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Take mm-hmm. a chance. It's hard. It worked out, so. Uh but with that, I think the valuable lesson from ask questions. Those earlier podcasts, like ask questions. Yeah, yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. Like, uh, I think questions are some of the most valuable shit in the world because none of us know what we're doing and we're all just guessing. Um, yeah, absolutely. And qu- questions can act as a way to better understand the world or to accuse somebody of not understanding the thing that they're talking about, depending yeah. on how you deploy them. Yeah, uh, there, there's a, definitely a way about it. But if I, everything I've been able to do and like get away with in life and like do something awesome has been because I asked the right person the right question, which doesn't happen most of the time when I ask the questions. <laughs> Either the question or the person is wrong and I've got to change it or like make it in such a way that it's more appealing. Uh, but I've been, that's how we started going to, uh, to MAGFest. That's how we got our jobs. Mm -hmm. That's, that's that's how, like, and that was like, I could deploy them conversationally, but Michelle Mm -hmm. really taught me to do it in like a work environment or to do Mm -hmm. it in, um, it's, it's funny because Michelle's talking about having learned it from our friend Sean and Sean is also Mm -hmm. a dear friend of mine, but I did not learn that from him. I learned it from Michelle just watching her reach out to people and say like hey do you want to give us a weirdly small for you amount of money that yeah. will allow us to do this really fucking weird thing and sometimes yeah. people would be like yeah sure why not it's it's surprising how little amount of money we have gotten out of companies and how far we have taken it yeah that's because we're scrappy <laughs> That <laughs> makes me kind of want to watch Fantastic Mr. Fox. Okay. But I can see uh, that. just because it's so much <laughs> crappy. Um, That's Britney's mentioned- deflection. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, I can see that. Oh, huh, interesting. <laughs> I, uh, so Sean denies that he taught me this. He Sean says, denies being friends with us. Yeah, that's mm. true. But he but is. <laughs> He was just like, well, no, he's also dropped you off the absolutely grid, so taught okay. me that. And I was just like, no, you're misremembering this. <laughs> I'm pretty, I, I well, have it, Legitimately, I have it might be an emerging pattern from both of yeah. you. Like both of you. Like where that's true. A conversation <clears throat> happened and it cued the thing in both people's brain and neither can... And because our brains hate us, you each attributed it to the other one. 
Yeah, yeah. And that's true. I mean, imposter syndrome is definitely a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the time, I definitely saw uh, sh- uh, Sean as an equal. And yeah. now you don't? No, I don't. Definitely not. <laughs> He's way better than me. <laughs> so, so being equals doesn't, like... In, in a lot of ways, we're all equals. And mm-hmm. yeah, part, of, part of the thing that I think is important is approaching every situation like you could learn something um and that's just because i am a person who didn't go to college and uh had to f- like fight for the understanding that i have of the world um rather than getting it cheap by going to college and coming out with a hundred thousand dollars in student loans oh, oh got, got college the concept Jared bum, 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 bum. but Jared i mean, didn't get the cheat sheet <laughs> <laughs> i did the konami code and just talked to a bunch of clever people but I mean, like, <laughs> there's nothing in the world wrong with approaching everything, like every conversation or situation, like you could learn something or gain a better understanding of the world mm-hmm. um, and not to get too existential and philosophical. But I think as humans, as as conscious beings, uh, our duty is to understand the world better. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And for I mean, this was an uh, a, a lesson that didn't seem that very valuable at first when I started learning it of asking questions and whatnot. It just seemed like, oh, well, I should not be scared of getting the no answer. That was the whole main reason yeah. why I never asked the question because or I think that's why most something. people don't ask the question. And rejection mm-hmm. is not that bad when a it's people you have never met and probably never will meet, and b. Uh, who cares? They're, would they say, let them say no. They might say yes, though. And the only way to find out is you ask the question. <clears throat> yeah. And finally, like, back to, like, the uh, equal But I thing. want them to think I'm cool. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way that you know, I've Brittany, made people I think, think I was cool was by treating them as equals. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. But asking people questions lets them talk and makes them feel cool. So they're like, oh, that person made me feel cool. Maybe they're also cool. Mm. <laughs> Let's be cool together. That's except unless you ask questions to teachers. Those people mm. are nerds. Yeah. <laughs> they're just show offy nerds. <laughs> yeah. Sitting at the front of the class having questions. Just know it. Uh. <laughs> uh. Oh. Well, we got about five minutes on this, or do you want to end it there? No, let's call it. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see you on the next Unless one. Unless anyone else has anything amazing that they want to add. I, I have a question. Anything? Did you know <laughs> Did you know that every time I hear that beep on your end, I think it's my PlayStation 4 turning on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you barely them- made you barely made that a question. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's also no. I didn't know that, Hutch. That was tricky. I liked it. <laughs> Did you know that I'm really great at making statements into questions? <laughs> Rhetorical, always. Uh, All right. Well, with that one, uh, I don't have any bye. more questions. So bye, leave us everybody. good questions in the comments. Yep. <laughs> Smash like and subscribe. Do you want to watch Heat Wave before anyone else? Well, there's an easy way to do that. Just back us up on Patreon at patreon.com slash half empty e tank and be the first to watch the episodes. Um, this week I don't really have a topic, so I'm gonna what? cheat and I'm gonna ask people, how's life going, guys? Chaos. This is chaos. How's, how's it going? <laughs> That's not true. You wanted to talk about something specific. Um Yeah. Specifically about me though. Okay. Well, oh, so is off. this a question? I would like to hear about you. Okay. Is this? Is Jerry? You, you, you cut just, out. Yeah, you cut out for a second. Oh, sorry. sorry. Is this you asking a question so that you can talk about yourself? That's some pro Hi. strats. Yeah, it is. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of asking questions, how can I talk about me? <laughs> so I just um, I've been thinking about doing this for a while, and I don't know if it's a bad idea or not, because I already have way too many hobbies, but I'm thinking of starting uh, doing, like, custom painting on consoles and controllers. 
Um, mainly because we already have a shit ton laying around. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, Michelle told me today about an eBay deal that she almost bought, but she didn't because she knew that I would just freak out. It was 120 Dreamcasts, broken Dreamcasts, <laughs> for $120 on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> A oh, dollar no. a Dreamcast. Yes. Yeah, a I almost bought. I, they uh, all were broken, but <laughs> like they were like all. Most of them were like cosmetically fine, but they were just like little like issues for each one. So I was like, oh, okay, I could I could turn this around. Blah blah blah. That's what I thought. But <laughs> I was profit. like, by the way, this is when we lived with Hutch. Mm, oh, I would have yeah. <laughs> I would have just lost it. I was like, where am I going to store these 120 Dreamcasts? <laughs> When are we going to find time to fix Jesus 120 Christ. Dreamcasts? <laughs> and yeah. you know the answer is you weren't going to. <laughs> yeah, I, that was part of the problem. So I like I just could not. Like you were briefly it. living in a fictional realm where you had the time, energy, and understanding to repair a hundred Dreamcasts. <laughs> yes. And then so what I've, would you do with them? <clears throat> I was going to sell them on eBay. I was going to like they oh, sell for like thirty dollars a pop. Turn a profit, huh? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm trying to turn some money. <laughs> okay. We were living. Uh, we were both unemployed, and we lived with a friend. And I, yeah, I was. Tr- I was like, okay, what stupid shit can I do? <laughs> Plus, well, it would have made an interesting YouTube video. You could have it would, doubled yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That uh, and I was definitely yeah. doing that. The importance yeah. of reducing, reusing, and recycling content. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I've been eyeballing all the extra consoles and controllers we have laying around. Like, mm. what can I paint? <laughs> yeah. How so many of those do you think Michelle will let you paint, course. Brittany? <laughs> well, there's some stuff that's hers. Oh, there's some stuff I'm just gonna take. And yeah. Like, well, you we didn't know about it. Here you go. Here's your custom painted thing. Because <laughs> yeah, I just I need to practice. So um, I don't know. It's just something I'm messing around with. But funny thing about it is I'm looking on YouTube to see if there's any videos. Uh, and there's not hardly any videos of custom paint jobs. It's either like a aesthetically pleasing or or interesting. Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. have so many views. And it's like what? And I don't know if I'll ever like film a video for it because that's just another extra thing that I thing probably do. don't need. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of so I started out. I saw this amazing like pastel in sixty four that was painted, and yeah. I kind of want to just paint it for myself. And then um, we'll just see where it goes from there. But that's one thing that I've been dabbling in. So have you done research on this? Do you know, Uh, like, how to approach painting a console? Yeah, so I started actually today, actually diving into the research. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And it seems like people have different uh, ways of doing it. And uh, you definitely should, like, take the console or controller apart. I saw some Mm. fucking noobs trying to spray paint it without taking it apart. And I'm like, that's going to make a huge mess. Oh, no. (laughs) And also, like, um, kill the electronics. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Um, So you want to take it apart completely. You're going to want to sand it and you're going to want to prime it. And then there's a couple different techniques you can do. You can either um, like spray paint it with actual spray paint. Uh, I've seen some people use paint pens because they were actually drawing directly on the console. Mm. Uh, Or you can airbrush it. And I haven't really... I've didn't have time to deep dive before the podcast started, but... um, I, the videos I did watch, no one has put like a top layer on top to like protect it, make it shiny. Mm. And I definitely want to do that because I don't want to have like a weird matte thing that can scratch off. So yeah, you got to have a top yeah. coat just to keep it secret. Yeah, like safe. A, a gloss. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely want that gloss. So especially with a controller because you're going to be handling it a lot. Yeah. So my boss has a a Galaxy uh, GameCube controller. I might ask him to take a better look at it well (laughs) that was actually made by professionals that do this called controlled chaos i'm a professional they're not sponsoring this (laughs) they're not but they're bleep out their name yeah (laughs) they're super they're super small i ain't worried about if they want to give us money we'll say their name do you know uh, (laughs) just like five bucks it would be like here's a 20 can we send letters (laughs) out to different corporations and be like if you pay us money we'll say your name we'll advertise you yeah i i like the idea of brand placement as like a hostage situation 
Oh, mm. for sure. Yeah. Okay. We're going to bleep yeah. you out unless you give us $10. I'm super bummed that the guy who sent Google the invoices that uh, Google just paid went to jail. Yeah. yeah because I feel like that Google is stupid. <laughs> yeah. That's and bad, like... Fucking sure, PO maybe management. that guy committed a crime, but also Google is stupid. <laughs> like, how yeah, is it his fault if they sent him money? <laughs> yeah, that's I just data. In- that's, that's I'm like- on that guy's side. Yeah, <laughs> controversial topic right here. <laughs> Fuck you, Google. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll be thrilled to hear he's got a champion in jail. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I, the people. So, like. Right at the start of the Iraq war, the U.S. government put a thing in place that was like, if a necessary part is going to an active war zone or like an active conflict area and it is under this one specific amount, I think it was like $200,000 or something, uh, nobody reviewed the invoice and it just got approved. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, or it just got paid. So there was this yeah. one company that was like shipping boxes of bolts for one hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars mm-hmm. to uh-huh. those places, <laughs> and they made like billions of dollars. And I don't think they went to jail. Yeah. No. Yeah. So wow, sucks that's to suck. Blowing my mind. Yeah. Right? A, yeah. Fuck do you. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of government bloat. Yeah, we should send the government. But with a B, how do you lose billions of dollars <laughs> like that? Yeah. Somebody's like that. not paying attention. So this just confirms that nobody knows what they're doing. Everyone's just guessing. Yeah, even in like top-notch jobs where you're like, they know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. No. <laughs> Have you seen our president try to give a speech? <laughs> nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> Have you yeah. seen Elon Musk try to interact with the world? Like, oh nobody knows what they're doing. Like, oh, like, Jesus. Been- he he needs to just stop talking sometimes. <laughs> he really does. My favorite thing is the people have been retweeting his tweet that says, if science ever is an argument with myself, anything that I say, you should agree with science. And he, uh, I don't even people know what that been, means. <laughs> uh, he's just been saying, like, he actually had a competent tweet and said, if I ever disagree with science, side with science is what he said. Okay. And he's been saying Which is some counter to what he's shit. been saying recently. Yeah, everything he's been saying lately <laughs> has been bullshit. So that, he just people have been That's like, like the most hilarious like joke. giving giving yourself a get out of jail free card that I think I've ever heard. I no, know, I right? think it's like, whatever I, I, I think say it's, next is maybe wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway. Like, I don't go. know, it just seems really weird to It it say feels that. like the equivalent of tweets that Trump made at Obama. Oh, that are yeah. now applicable to himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, I've been seeing a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're the always there. Like, <laughs> the ones with like <laughs> Donald Trump saying shit that's applicable to him right now towards Obama. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I've been seeing a lot of those. Barkley, I, I think know. you should paint um, the consoles. Are you going to mm-hmm. airbrush or are you going to spray paint? Um, I'm thinking for starting off, probably just spray paint to see if I even like it. Yeah, I don't want to invest a bunch of money into it and then be like, "Oh, I hate this." I don't because if do you this. if you airbrush it, you need to just like do Dreamcast consoles that have Myrtle Beach T-shirts on them. <laughs> That's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do like I think the first thing I'm going to try is like gradients because they're the easiest. Um, so like Myrtle Beach airbrushing. I'm gonna do like palm trees and shit. It's gonna be very like aesthetic. Very aesthetic. Um <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna get some of those sweet, like um it's like a little thing you clip onto the top of the spray bottle so that you don't have to kill your finger. It's more of like a trigger, a trigger that you yeah. pull. Uh mm. like a gun if you're an American, but like if you're not American, gun. it's more like if you you're just sp- got my attention. <laughs> if you're spraying like a Windex <laughs> bottle, you know, whatever. <laughs> but I'm thinking about trying like the the spray paint first and then um moving on from there if I like it. And the first ones I'm gonna do are just gonna be for me. Um and then we'll see what happens because I'm like always in my brain I'm always like, How can I make money off of this? Like that's everything I do. I'm like, how can I make money off of this? <laughs> yeah, <it's> fucking capitalist. <laughs> Me and uh, Brittany have 
like not recently, but at one point we spent a lot of time looking into airbrushing, especially when you were working at Michael's and we looked yeah, at all Yeah, because I was shit. thinking about using my discount, which wasn't that great to begin with, but. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're, but um, it's all we had. <laughs> that's what we were definitely looking into. And I'm still looking into it because I have interest in airbrushing. So. Yeah, and there's not a lot of tutorials. Well, I'll have to look up. There's probably more tutorials for just airbrushing in general mm-hmm. versus airbrushing consoles. Yeah. Um, but I was just really surprised in the gap in that uh, that market because it seems like I see some of these videos that aren't very good and they have like half a million views and I'm like, okay, that's weird. But yeah. well, whatever. They, they doubled down on a niche. Yeah. So that's... And Brittany's like, I can do that, but better. Yeah, I can do that better because, <laughs> you know that's i'm conceited like that <laughs> that's not true at all i'm actually also super you can. insecure about everything i do <laughs> i do things that i make all the time like i'll make a cross stitch for like the hundredth time and then i'll be like this sucks no one's gonna want this and michelle's like shut your face hole and sell that <laughs> <laughs> my favorite is when like she's just like this one stitch is the wrong color and there's like there's like like I don't know, eight to ten thousand stitches into this thing, but she goofed on a pixel, and I'm just like, no one's going to notice. Sell it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very, I'm very critical of my own work. So I think yeah. I think that's all good artists, though. Yeah, well, probably. And also We're a bunch all. of bad artists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I like I I understand that. Like I. <laughs> Barkley, I feel like you are more discerning and then like, so when you make a thing and people are like, no, this is great. And you're like, oh, you're too fucking stupid to understand that I fucked up in this way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which is still not a good look because then I'm calling the person who says that it's good stupid. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like this? Clearly you're a fucking idiot. I'm club. like, you just like it because you don't know any better. <laughs> Yeah, um, so. I always make a weird excuse for it. I always wiggle out of the compliment any way I can. So. <laughs> That's actually uh, my superpower. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, please don't compliment my art because it will, one, make me very uncomfortable and two, I'll have to avoid that compliment in some way. Exactly. It makes my hands sweaty. I just don't like it. <laughs> These weak hands sweaty. So even though you didn't think that you could talk about this thing that you've been interested in for 15 minutes you started this off as like a maybe we'll talk about this and i knew exactly what you wanted to talk about but we're like at the end of this well, thing and you, you spent this whole time talking about this thank one you for thing. the guidance okay so we have about a minute left so let me just ask you guys would you be willing like if you were at a con or in a store or whatever and you saw this amazing console or controller that was like painted after one of your favorite video games would you consider buying it if you were like, holy fuck, I have to have this as like a showpiece. Um, I would rather buy it if it was like sexy Sonic eating a chili dog. Mm-hmm. Like if it was if it was some weird, weird shit, you know? Yeah. So you're saying like memes is what you want to see. Yeah. Just like <laughs> solidified memes. <laughs> what if I <laughs> what if I recreated that amazing Mario paint uh, fan art of Mario and Vin Diesel sharing a plate of spaghetti? <laughs> oh God! Ooh. But it was on a console. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's got to be on an NES because you got that gives you enough. Uh, that gives you enough like canvas that yeah. to really show it off. <laughs> And Hutch, what if we made the hot sauce? <laughs> oh gosh! Onto something for you, like a controller you, oh, or yeah. something. <laughs> you, you know what? A hot sauce in space. You sold me. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Well, I don't really have anything else to add to that. So, what if this segment may be over? In case you guys have something. Oh no! I have an idea. I'm gonna okay. guess and this. I think okay. you could go on, like, look at uh some data around like common names Mm -hmm. and then airbrush (laughs) common name the hedgehog on some genocide like a fucking like cup in a souvenir shop (laughs) yes yes 
but it's Steve the Hedgehog. What if I? What if artwork is amazing, but the concept is trash? <laughs> I love that though. <laughs> I think there are a few things um, as wonderful as someone who is highly talented aiming their creative skills at something completely bullshit. <laughs> I am down. I feel more inspired than ever before. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I think yep. you should do it. Yeah, so I think I will. When are you going to rent your own storage unit so you can do this? <laughs> tomorrow okay <laughs> all right well get ready for our garage stream from a storage unit so uh, yeah. Brittany can put like garage dream dot business <laughs> i can't wait i'm gonna get business cards made up <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> storage unit garage custom mods right here I want like a really expensive business card though, where like you have to pull like a little, it's like an origami where you have to like pull a lever and the garage door slides up. Oh, okay. And then it has your card or your information underneath it. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Can I, can it cost me $50 to produce five cards? <laughs> that would be great. Mwah, yeah. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> All right. Well, I feel like tequila is hitting me pretty good right now. So hell yeah, let's get weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye. See you. Smash like and subscribe. You got the social medias. We got the social medias. You got the Facebooks. We got the Facebooks. You got the Twitters. We got the Tweeters. We got the uh, Instagrams. We don't really use that one too much, but you know, we're on there too. If there's something else, we probably got it. You can find them all in the description at the bottom. Uh, welcome back. Uh, so, uh, I, um, wanted, <laughs> so this, this thing I found out has been driving me crazy ever since I did so much so that, uh, 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 Brittany and Michelle stopped over the other day, and I'm just like, I can't wait until Sunday. We have to, I have to show you this. So I'm going to show this now to Jairus, and okay. uh, I want to uh, talk about it. Okay. Uh, the link should, uh, here you go. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this. <laughs> oh, boy. So when you said you were going to talk about Space Jam 2 today, I was like, oh, yeah, let's talk about Space Jam 2. We can talk about Space Jam, how much we love it, how it's going to be uh, uh, impossible to do a proper sequel to it, all kinds of things that we can talk about. But no, this weird ass Space Jam 2 leak has like a bunch of fucking. They're extra creating guest the Space Jam in it. cinematic universe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <clears throat> they're, they're, they're like. Fuck just the Looney Tunes. We're going to get everything we can throw in there. It is. I'm like looking at everything. So like the title is like Space Jam 2 leaks include Joker, Mask, and Pennywise. Mm -hmm. They said they'll also be including um, uh, fuck. Harry Potter, Wizard of Oz, and even The Matrix. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the uh, video we saw, uh, the Wicked Witch of the West was on there. Yeah. Mad Max characters, Clockwork Orange, Penguin, fucking Wicked Witch of the West, and wild. Agent Smith. I mean, fuck it, Batman. I want yeah. Batman on my team. I mean, is this is this hashtag not my Space Jam or is this true to Space Jam's weirdness? I, honestly, I think I, I get there's no good way to go. So you might as well go as bad as possible. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this because, like, I'm not one of those people that's usually like, oh, this is ruining my childhood. I hate it. Um, I'm just like, oh, I won't watch it or I won't watch it again <laughs> if I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, but it's just like, I'm just out of curiosity. Like, where, where are they going for here? Because... In the original Space Jam, they just reached out to um, pretty much all of the Looney Tunes, like all mm. of the like weird one-off characters made like a cameo at least. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but it's just weird that they're recognizing like there was some like fourth wall breaking in Space Jam where they talked about Warner Brother properties mm. and stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah, he this, kissed his own ass. Yeah, and he kissed his own ass, which is pretty funny as an adult. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. 
as like I don't know like what are they doing with this is it supposed to be like a scary movie type of thing where they're just hodgepodging all their properties together like I don't I don't know I have to see more of it because maybe maybe it's a parody on the on the whole notion of of uh, a cinematic universe so we have the Warner Brothers cinematic universe yeah. <laughs> Space Jam 2 is the official kickoff <laughs> and it's just maybe maybe there'll be it like the Warner Brothers like movie lot or something and they're like running through different sets and maybe they'll see different things. I don't know. It's just <clears throat> very this, weird. Actually, this <laughs> that sounds like sounds... a setup to an Animaniacs movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm thinking yeah, it's it... going to be very Animaniacs. <clears throat> so, that... one, I'm going to say that this is all this all appears to be based off of one person's Instagram. Well, I oh, thought yeah. it was like a video that there were like, a bunch sort of, of people in this crowd that took t- took videos of it, but uh, yeah. Where did this video show Hutch? Uh, I I don't know the actual origin, um, mm-hmm. but it it was at, it looks like it's at some sort of like concert performance of some sort. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm still uh, yeah, I don't know the a, context. Of I'm the, still waiting uh, for like a proper trailer for Space Jam 2. So yeah, we've, there's no proper trailer. <clears throat> there is a reveal photo. I just put it in our chat between each other. And uh, and uh, the reveal photo is just like a logo. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like the logo, to be completely honest. I think it's a good logo for Space Jam 2. I but, agree. Uh, I really like Ryan Coogler, who is the mm-hmm. director. He did yeah. um, Creed, Black Panther, and a mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm very excited to see whatever weird like. At first, I was like, "Oh, this sounds like some wild, weird bullshit," and then I saw that he mm-hmm. was involved, and I was like, "I have faith that this human could pull it together in a way that so, makes sense." I. I didn't think about this until Hutch mentioned it, but he was just like, I want Batman on my team. And I was like, wait a minute. That's right. Maybe we can get Batman in a Space Jam jersey, still with the cowl on, but that's it. And playing, a, playing, playing with, where it's, where with Ron it's, James uh, and Bugs Bunny. Conway from the yes. Batman the Animated Series. Yes. Yeah, that'd yes. be good. I, like, if I got that, I'd be like, worth it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm just i'm curious to see where they go because like okay i'm gonna level with you guys space jam it's not that good mm-hmm. uh, excuse me the music is what makes that movie mm-hmm. great yeah um and- like it was great when we were kids but if you go back and try and watch it now or if you try oh, to show it to people it. he didn't direct it he's he's writing and producing space jam a new legacy Okay, like I, if you or if you try to show it to people who've never seen it back in the day, like <clears throat> I think people will be like, "Yeah, this movie is is okay, like it's good, but yeah. it's not like as great as people make it out to be." I think it's, it is it's just a nostalgia for movie. how fucking insane the '90s were. Yeah. yeah, agreed. And the '90s were insane, and the Space Jam soundtrack catapulted that movie into yeah. memedom. But, and like I love that movie, but I even though R. Kelly too. has a sex cult, yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's super unfortunate. It's really, it's really hard. That's actually we watched the first movie we watched for our weekly like get together thing was Space Jam, uh-huh. and uh, when we did, it starts with "I believe I can fly." Yeah, that's literally the first thing that you hear, and I was just like, <clears throat> oh. Mm. And it's it's so hard to like start that movie now because of that. Yeah, it's a great song still. D- so, I, oh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. Um, this made me think of another movie that does something just as kind of crazy. Who Framed Roger Rabbit brings yes. together Warner Brother yeah. characters and Disney characters. I just looked it up, so it is a uh, Buena Vista distribution. Um. Mm. Although Touchstone Pictures and Amblin Entertainment produced it, uh, yeah, but it was this animated like by Disney. Disney. Rights now. Everybody has yeah. their hands in that movie, <laughs> and, so, and, and and they and they have the the um, section in uh, Disney World. So they the have. Movie. There's this concept that that still exists within uh, 
Disney and animation in general. Um, and it's this idea that they call uh, kicking the lamp. So there was a yeah. scene in Who Framed Roger Rabbit where uh, Bob Hoskins picks up Roger Rabbit, and, like swings <clears> him <throat> around and he hits a lamp and the lamp spins around and like throws all these weird shadows. Um, and that single shot was like so much fucking time and so mm-hmm. much money to make. But it was such a like thing that made the film better and more realistic and more interesting mm-hmm. um, that like knocking the lamp or kicking the lamp is is this stand-in phrase for like do we want to do it or do we want to do it right yeah and there's like who framed roger rabbit is an amazing amazing movie it's fucking wild and weird and still haunts my nightmares sometimes but (laughs) yeah agreed like yep in terms of the amount of energy that went into it fucking wild so we watched this YouTube show where these visual artists, <clears throat> they uh, critique mm-hmm. like uh, CGI and stuff. Mm. You probably remember the name of it. I don't uh, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I forget. I-, I can look it up. But you okay. go ahead. Um, so they uh, have people write in and they're like, critique this uh, CGI. And they do good movies and they do bad movies. But mm-hmm. they did um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And some of the things they had to do to... Uh, it like replaced the cartoons. It was like really crazy. Like they had this man driving this like little tiny fucking car for the scene where they're driving the cartoon car. And like all the actors were about to die at any moment because it just wasn't safe. Um, <laughs> so, uh, she's referring to a YouTube channel called corridor crew. Uh, they're actual visual effects artists in Hollywood. Yeah. Worked on some movies and they, uh, they just, they look at like really good or really uh, bad like visual effects scenes. Sh- tell you how they did it and tell you what went wrong. And then they get a lot of guests too who actually worked on some of the projects. Mm-hmm. They can give you oh, some that's insight really cool. on how they actually did it. It's yeah, really cool. I love that show. Actually, actually I kind of prefer the ones where they get stunt actors to come in, yeah, and show off all the stunt scenes that they did and like what the cost was. And yeah. by cost, I meant like human physical toll. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I broke my arm doing this yeah. or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and those are really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like the old, um, all the old cowboy movies, they used to just set up a trip wire and mm-hmm. just trip like hundreds of horses. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And when you trip a horse and it breaks its leg, you have to kill that horse. Yeah. Horses can't live with uh, only like three legs. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> I found this out because I know this is derailing a little bit, but when I was a kid, my mom used to like to watch the horse races a lot. And my mom was really good at picking the winner. Like she was just really great at it. She never bet or anything because we were just at home. Uh, And one time as a little kid, I was probably like four. I remember it was like before I even went to school and I was like, I want that horse. And only because of the name or whatever, that horse broke its leg and they had to come out on the track and shoot it. And my Jesus. mom was like, wow, you fucking suck, you four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to watch this anymore. <laughs> and that's How many horses must die for your race? <laughs> yeah, right. So, wow. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. And my mom still to this day will not live that down. She thinks that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it is. great, mom. It, dark humor wise, it's pretty funny, but <laughs> that is great. <laughs> well, uh, stepping uh, sidestepping around Britney's psychological trauma, I'm very interested in seeing what they do with Space Jam too. <laughs> yeah, we'll me see too. Happens. Yeah, this sounds like it's going to be a trip to Olive Garden and then to the theater altogether. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Who yes. do you think will do uh, the theme song? Do you think it will be the original Space Jam theme remixed? I think it'll be a remix. Who do you think will do the remix? I hope it's Uh, it's going to be Black Eyed Peas. It's going to be Black Eyed Peas. (laughs) Why would it be Black Eyed Peas? Because Will I Am is going to do it. I just I I believe you mean William. (laughs) That's that's correct. (laughs) It's going to be like. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be like Drake is gonna do it or something. You're you're not wrong. Or or Drake Billie featuring Eilish. Post Malone, <laughs> or yeah. like The Weeknd or some the shit. The Weeknd, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. You know, honestly, I like some of these artists. Um, and if they pull off the best fucking music they've ever pulled off in their careers in that album, 
it'll be worthwhile. The problem, though, is that the music is the best part of the movie, so I don't think there's going to be much that will live up to the music. Uh, excuse of the me. Movie. I believe you mean Bill Murray playing himself and winning the game? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is yep. true. <clears throat> I actually I, used that gif of him just coming out onto the court and just being like, excuse me, I believe you could use a bit of assistance. <laughs> I use that all the time professionally. <laughs> I forgot all about Bill Murray in that movie until like a few years ago. I think when mm-hmm. we rewatched it at some point mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah. oh yeah, Bill Murray is in this movie playing himself doing weird shit. Yeah, he just wanted to be in the movie. So I just I realized, hope he comes back for the next one. I just realized that he was playing himself in the movie last time I watched it. Like I never really caught that. I didn't really. Like, I knew who Bill Murray was as a kid, but that joke didn't. I didn't yeah. really get that joke. Well, but I I think that's everyone the aging process. Or a joke. Yeah, I think that I think that joke gets better with time as Bill Murray gets weirder. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. But my favorite part is the when the main monster, like the bad guy, was like, I didn't know if this was, I didn't know that Dan Aykroyd was in this picture or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really good. <laughs> Which also is Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah, his voice by Danny DeVito. So <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. Jeez, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so much star power in that movie. Well, the only yeah. way that this movie will be good is if LeBron James has a dog named Charles. <laughs> like, <laughs> no one's going like, to get that joke except people who like the first movie, which is L who's going to want to go because, see this. So, yeah, <laughs> because uh, Michael Jordan's dog was named Charles Barkley, <laughs> <laughs> which is a really good dog name. Yeah, yes. and Charles Barkley was also in Space Jam, so. <laughs> So is Bugsy Malone, which was wild. <laughs> yeah. So I can't wait to see how Shaq uh, is in this because he's going to be in this somehow. Shaq. Oh, he'll save every <laughs> one of us. I would, I would pay good money to watch someone remake the entire, oh, like Flash just Gordon one episode. Shaq. Yes, Flash Gordon with Shaq. I yeah. would pay good money for that. Shaq Goodsman. <laughs> Oh. Ooh, Hutch, you got anything else for this one? No, I think we covered all of it. That's <laughs> just just wild times, guys. All right. Well, thank you again, everyone. We'll see you on the next segment. Bye. 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 Smash like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting for it, weren't you? Yep. I forgot about it. I was like looking at the wall. Or whatever. <laughs> That's going to be dumb. <laughs> Want to see us perform live? Use that big brain of yours and follow us on Twitch. We do things live there sometimes. Uh, welcome to Heat Wave. Uh, this, today we're going to get a little serious because I want to know about... <laughs> Dial it in. You having a lot of fun? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Dial it in. Take it down a notch, no fu- cool it's, 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 a, it's a no fun zone because we're going to talk about what our worst job was and why. What's a story about your worst job? I was a mall Santa once, which was not. Are you serious? Whoa. Yeah. When I was in high school, I was for one weekend, the mall Santa at a strip mall um, that had no foot traffic. So I got paid like $12 an hour to uh-huh. just sit there and read. Mm-hmm. But dressed as Santa. <laughs> right. That's amazing. How, how old were you? 15 16 yeah that's right you looked like an oh, adult you have to then. get a worker's permit when you're that young <laughs> <laughs> it was all cash oh that's oh, fine okay then. Yeah, yeah i don't even know if i was legally employed doing that because my you friend were. was like hey i've been doing this thing but i have to go to the beach this weekend um could you fill in for me i will give you the money wow they went to the beach in the winter <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know what part of the story is more funny. <laughs> <laughs> Jairus, this is this is not how you start. This is how you finish a segment. 
I love this. This is amazing. No, I can't believe this is in response to you saying, "Let's get serious." <laughs> oh, perfect. I'm very happy. <laughs> Holy shit, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, I, uh, no one's going to be able to top that. Um, no. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, my worst jobs were always like something I did temporarily. I worked in a, fa- a sock factory at Mount Airy for a long time. Ooh, tell us about the sock factory. There's nothing to say. I I literally. What was your job? The, yeah, what did I you turned do? socks inside out. <laughs> I would go Very there. Very important job. And cool. every single day, an inside out sock would come at me in a tube. I would turn it right side out and I would put it into another tube and it would float away. <laughs> and I did this wow. thousands of times a day. Yeah, Michelle, so- did you have to wear a hairnet? Uh, I did. Even though mm. at the time I had a buzz cut. <laughs> did you have to wear gloves? Yes. And I also had to listen to bad Latino music the whole time. <laughs> I can't. I uh, for a short time there, I couldn't go to Mexican restaurants because of, you know PTSD. <clears throat> oh jeez! <laughs> you had I wish polka I was PTSD. Yes, I had polka PTSD. Polka. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that wasn't my worst job. My worst job was probably a company called the Telephone Company. <laughs> Mm. I, I gave you a lift to that job once. Yeah, yeah. You were you one time you came and picked me up from work and we went and and you bought me a cheeseburger and I just was like on the verge of crying the entire time. <laughs> Tell us what you did at the telephone company. I called people illegally <laughs> and I would ask them about their political questions. This was during the uh, Mitt Romney and Obama uh, presidential race. And I would just uh, work all night. uh, Because it was like a third shift job, right? mm -hmm. And North Carolina didn't have after uh, hour laws for like solicited calls and whatnot. So you'd call people at three in the morning? I would call people like at like eight. 9, 10, 11. I think we got off around 1 a.m. Mm-hmm. And th- so it's illegal to call people in the state of New York after 8 o'clock. That is if you're calling from the state of New York. So but if you're mm, calling out of state, you can call them. It's the, we're, it's not against the law because it's not our law. We're not in that state. It doesn't matter. How many people <clears throat> answered the phone and told you that you were breaking the law? Uh, about two thirds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they uh, the 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 occupants of the state of New York definitely knew their rights. It's yeah. kind of impressive. <laughs> uh, but when I um, the half the time my phone calls were just that went anywhere beyond like an instant hang up would be just old men and women who haven't had anyone call them oh. <laughs> in a long time, oh. and they were just happy to talk to a human being. So they would like ask me questions after I would ask them political questions. And the questions were always just like barely have anything to do with politics. They'd be like, you know, oh, what'd you eat today? Likes this. Do you like, do you like this? And I'm just like, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. (laughs) Or like whatever. And just, they just wanted to have conversations and I would just leave every day. With people yelling at me because you can never do good enough work. And then, um, Mm -hmm. but I had to have that job because it was like the best paying job I could get for a while. It was like $10 an hour when, and minimum wage was still like seven, it's still $7.25, I think. Yeah, I think it's still $7.25. But um, I I was just like, me and Brittany had bills that desperately need to get paid. So I did it. I have two answers for this, one of which Uh is like an actual job that I had that I was like salary for. And the other is uh, a freelance contract that I had. Um, So the worst actual job that I've ever had in my life was working for a meat distributor um, that uh, drove like I had to drive like thousand miles a week something like that yeah um and at times worked 90 hour weeks um Mm -hmm. and yeah it was just a 
a mess, mainly because it was a small business owned by a sociopath. And uh, he had very Republican ideals about <clears throat> like pulling himself up by his bootstraps at the expense of his employees. Mm-hmm. Um, and the funny one is my worst freelance contract was ghostwriting ebooks on uh, how to be successful at pyramid schemes for a guy who was starting his own pyramid schemes. <laughs> Oh, that's that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty rough. <laughs> I, uh, we were friends through uh, the the latter of those two jobs. Yeah, uh, well. I knew you during the first job. But I wouldn't say we were friends. And I was yet. just sad and angry <laughs> all the time. Well, yeah, I barely got to see you because anytime I did, it was either at like Jan's house at like four <clears> in the fucking morning. Well, I feel like yeah. this also put some perspective on like people who maybe seem like not friendly or somebody you don't really want to get to know because they seem very gruff Mm -hmm. it's like what's happening (laughs) they might be exhausted yeah what's happening in their life that's making them be that way oh yeah absolutely (laughs) absolutely so it kind of puts some perspective into that um yeah so my worst jobs i've had a lot of really bad jobs but the two that stand out to me the most was the first one um it was between I was actually it was my first year of college I was still living at home um and I had bought a car and I had a job already I was a spot reporter for the newspaper but they paid me in cash and it was only I worked like the entire weekend and it was only like a $75 a weekend (laughs) but that wasn't the worst job I had to get a second job to pay my car payment so the only place that would hire me was Burger King Mm. and working a Burger King in your hometown when you from a very small town and everyone went to college like to universities and you're going to a community college and you're still living at home with your parents and you're working at burger king makes you feel like a fucking failure and um the manager put me in the front and she didn't train me she just left me up there and i didn't know how to use like anything yeah Uh, i don't even know any systems or processes yeah yeah and i didn't even really know i wasn't familiar with the menu at burger king because i don't really eat there um and she just left me up there all by myself so i made a ton of mistakes and got yelled at by customers of course and then oh, geez. at night when I would like we would close and I would sweep the guy who worked on the fries would throw fries on the floor and be like you missed a spot <laughs> and I'd be like oh, wow cool. <laughs> but luckily I worked there for probably about a week I worked there enough to make enough money to pay like my first car payment that month and then I was like I'm out of here I can't work here anymore I have to find a different job so yeah um luckily I wasn't there very long but that was really rough um The second job that comes to mind that was really terrible was uh, the job I had before the one I work at now, which is Michael's. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Michael's tricked me. I was like, I've worked in retail before, which wasn't great, but um, I just needed to get a job. And I thought Michael's would be fine because it seems chill. It's an arts and crafts store. I could get a discount. And when I interviewed, they asked me, do you want to work? Um, I I was hired on as seasonal, so like during the holidays. They asked me if I wanted to work as a cashier or if I wanted to come in at night and do stocking. And I was like, perfect, I'll just come in at night because then I won't have to deal with customers. Mm. Well, that was a huge mistake because the manager who who ran the night shift was super fucking mean for no reason. Uh, So I would come in at 3 a.m. and they would give us our schedule and they would say, like, you get off at this time. And every single time I would go in, they would ask me to work like an extra hour or an extra two hours or they wouldn't they would just tell us like you're gonna work extra two hours like mm-hmm. i couldn't just be like i want to leave um <laughs> and it was one of those jobs where you have a bunch of small things that it doesn't seem like a big deal at the time but when you look back on it you're like why the fuck was i there for so long and they did all these things to me um we also unloaded the trucks and for some reason michael's doesn't like bring stuff in on pallets we unload these tiny fucking boxes by hand and it takes us the entire like that's it, insane it, yeah entire Ooh. like four to five hours to unload a truck <clears throat> um and our manager would not let us leave the line to go to the bathroom and this one particular time this is gonna get a little gross but it's one particular time i was on my period and they wouldn't let me go to the bathroom and i bled into my jeans for two hours <laughs> So Jesus after Christ. after that, I was like, OK, I'm just going to quit this job, even though we were both really broke and we were living with Hutch at the time. I was like, I can't do this job anymore. Like, it's making me crazy. Let me just quit. 
And the most satisfying thing that happened is I focused a lot more on my Etsy and I ended up making the same amount of money I made doing Etsy yeah. than I made at this minimum wage job. So I felt justified. And then immediately after, this has a happy ending, immediately after we got our jobs at Limited Run and we were doing really well. So I don't have yeah. to worry about that shit anymore. But that was probably the worst job I've ever had. So. <clears throat> yeah, well, and I remember I'm, you coming I'm home really that morning and crying. Yeah. Glad <laughs> that you left that. And yeah. Like we, we had some some uh lengthy conversations about it mm -hmm. and it like because no job is worth your sanity or whatever oh, yeah, especially sure. when it's not like that's that's part of the poverty trap is that they keep they they companies like that make you feel as though you have no option other than to continue working there um yeah and, and I felt that because I worked there for almost a year. Like I quit yeah. right before my one year anniversary. Like I, I wanted to quit before my one year anniversary. And it, it's just weird. Like when you think back, you're, you'd be like, why did you stay there for so long? But yeah. at the time, I don't know. It was a bunch of little things that added up and I was just trying to make money. So <laughs> we were also in a bad spot. No. Yeah. Like, I mean, big ups to where they do, do. We got out of that situation both because you were skilled and also like. I feel Hutch, like we were just lucky. too. Yeah. Hutch mm. was exceptionally lucky in like letting us live with him for a little bit. And then Jairus uh jaris also gave you some funds to get started on a few mm -hmm. projects so we could get going yeah so we so. uh so I, I honestly we have both of them to thank for getting us out of that spot yeah for sure but yeah, um and, like <laughs> fucking do it again in a heartbeat because oh yeah i like i i was in the same place with that meat distributor job and mm -hmm. uh i got very lucky in that um, there was this point of time in like July, uh, 2011 where I got hit by a car. Um, and then, or like I had an occurrence <clears throat> where somebody fucked up and my boss called me from that meat distributor job. And he was like, I need you to come in on a Saturday to drive, um, three hours one way to drop off this one thing mm. that somebody else mm. forgot to like write down and i was like no i'm i i can't and i'm not going to um so i got fired and then i got hit by a car so i had enough resources to like go to new york and try it for a little bit and come back and and that's how i ended up in my place so, like, there's mm. definitely a part that's grateful for, like, absurdly shitty jobs, mainly as, like, I am so fucking glad I don't have to do shit like that anymore. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really so curious what Hutch's shittiest job was. Yeah, I, me too. I'm gonna I, go ahead and add another five minutes. Yeah, I. so, I mean, my, mine doesn't, will never compare to what you... I'll have like I actually don't really have very many jobs actually I I think I've only well, ever had three at IBM for like what ten years now ten plus? yeah yeah I've only so had like three insane. three jobs I, I had a uh, convenience store job at NC State uh, for a couple of years and then yeah I've had two like actual positions over here where I'm at now um the but yeah the one that I it was was definitely my worst um was doing support mm -hmm. i was not a fan of well like i i really enjoyed working with the people more than anything yeah um and well, that's and, that's one of the and, traps what's that that's one of the traps that's one of the ways that you are you become stuck places yeah is yeah that, yeah like you, uh, yeah you I, I, I definitely agree a responsibility and, and, to the people around you more so than your own happiness and well-being mm -hmm. yeah and and uh, that's definitely a thing that has yeah definitely kept me there way longer than well <laughs> there's there's actually more to that than just that so um yeah once you know, I, I got good like communication and like good soft skills from from doing that job. So I mean, mm -hmm. uh, and I got to see a lot of cool stuff. So yeah, I'm definitely grateful for it. But I should have like been there in half the time that I actually ended up spending there. Mm -hmm. um, but so for me, 
Um, at some point, you know, all those people started to leave, and then all of a sudden, I was the last one. Mm-hmm. And when you're the last one, they are very hesitant to let you leave. Yeah. So I got kind of caught in that trap even after, like, I had expressed, you know, that I wanted to get out of there. Yeah. Um, and they, the, the the real like thing that really annoyed me is is like I never got promoted during that whole mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though I had been there for so long and you know was a subject matter expert and whatnot. Um. So, and and, and not even just that, like. It, it got real tough, like the in the earlier half of it, because we, you know we we got you know so many. There was a lot of like overnight and weekend calls, nice. so I got a little bit of like, um, like like a, like a psychological like kind of trigger whenever I hear like a specific ringtone from a phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that I relate to. <laughs> Even even today, every time I hear that Verizon, like, ugh. I, uh, anyway. Yeah, it just um, makes you think of that. Yeah. That. All the I, jumping off that, I think it that makes sense. Like, I have a few psychological triggers for certain sounds and certain, like, things happening uh, due to, like, past aggressions at work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I uh, I eventually got out of there, and uh, I'm in a lot better of a of a spot where I'm at now. I'm actually doing more of what I want to do. Yeah. Um. So and uh, yeah, they rec- my new my new team recognized that. Uh, oh yeah, you should have been uh, promoted a long time ago. <laughs> uh. So and they uh, they did that pretty quickly. So. Okay, that's Glad good. That. So uh, yeah, so a happy ending of sorts. Yeah. Yay. Well, with that, I'm going to just say I hope that if you are in a bad spot at uh, your job right now, or even most know that there are better things out there. Yeah. There's absolutely more opportunities out there. And back to our first uh, subject, you know, just ask some questions. You never know what it might uncover. Hell yeah. Oh, who you? <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.